An 87 year old guy with single kidney ischemic heart disease on aspirin and previous left and lower hernia repair five years prior came into the ED with painful hernia and acute epigastric to right upper quadrant pain, fever with positive blood cultures. This was a CT scan done by the ED showing a great big hernia containing sigmoid colon into the scrotum on the left, and so I took him to theatre. His left inguinal hernia was able to be reduced under general anaesthetic. This was the initial view, seeing an encased gallbladder. But my approach was to look at the left inguinal hernia first. There was also what looked like a port site hernia in the right groin. I was going to approach the clean operation first and then get onto the gallbladder. Thankfully, I'd managed to reduce the hernia at the start. Here's the right sided 5mm port that I had to calculate to be useful for the cholecystectomy as well as the inguinal hernia. That's the big neck. And time for port on the patient's uh, left side of abdomen. So staying quite high up here to create a nice big pocket. This video is considerably edited, otherwise you'd be staying through a very painful long operation as it was. Quite a lot of fibrosis in this preperitoneal plane as, uh, as you would expect. So I just followed where the uh, path of least resistance was and this certainly was easier to dissect into that retropubic plane initially before moving on into that fibrotic plane of the previous repair. You can see glimpses of what looked like ultra pro mesh. Didn't seem to be a lot of mesh. I suspect it may have contracted upon itself. There's another glimpse of it there. And certainly there was what appeared to be an inferiorly based recurrence. Peritoneum was really thin and tattered. I love the ligature for hernia repairs. You can use it with energy, without energy. energy. It's a blunt dissector. You can see that nerve coming up. I'm staying close to the sac to try and stay away from that. It seems to pass right through that rolled up piece of uh, ultra pro mesh. I'm going to try and stay close to the peritoneum to stay away from that. really quite stuck. So here I find it's often better to grab a pair of scissors and just cut sharply through the mesh and fibrosis. So in a sec you'll see me swap over. Just chomping through that, but staying close to the peritoneum. And I didn't think it was worthwhile trying to remove that mesh. It'd probably do more harm to the nerve that's all caught up with it. looked intact to me. Again, hugging the peritoneal sac. Didn't see any gonadal vessels laterally. Of fibrosis medially here. You can see some mesh caught up at the medial part of the internal ring. And 
And again, the principle is staying close to the peritoneal sac, teasing those structures away from it. You can see the vas deferens there. So here I'm thinking, where are those gonadal vessels? I don't wanna have a shrinking testis afterwards in this patient. So I'm teasing tissues off the peritoneal sac medially now. I think all the anatomy was distorted by the previous surgery and the hernia recurrence. And there we go. So I can feel more confident now that I'm not going to damage those vessels. Quite a big sac. That would create a nice deep pocket inferiorly to sit the mesh in. Hugging the peritoneum as before. See that nerve? Retropubic dissection. And you can see those vessels really look quite medial, but I think it's all been displaced by the previous surgery and the hernia recurrence. I'm getting a decent pocket forming there. And so the hernia neck is the inguinal ligament. I decided to put an interlocking down of 2O V-lock non-absorbable. I guess because this was a recurrence, just wanted to make sure there was an extra bit of insurance there. Tension-free interlocking down, a little bit old-fashioned. That's not the... Uh, primary repair I am going to put mesh in but that's going to certainly stop any or reduce the chance of any mesh moving into that internal ring. So with the interlocking done it's a matter of um, catching a little bit of the last pass of suture. You'll soon see the pattern And always passing the needle from below at the inguinal ligament. We don't want to catch any nerves or other structures. And here I'm just doubling back a bit between my last passes. Although you shouldn't need to, I decided to just lock that suture, reduce the chance of it unraveling. So I've asked the nurse to go and grab the 
uh, ProGrip mesh, but decided to waste no time and get onto that what looked like a port site hernia in the right groin. Added a 5mm epigastric port just for that little bit of extra exposure. So this is a 3.0 VLOC absorber wool suture. And I'm just going to do a primary closure of the uh, fascia. Remember this is an 86 year old guy. Didn't think that he would need any mesh for something this small. Doubling back and then I use the same suture to close the peritoneum. So you'll see that in a sec. Skipping forward. So with the ProGrip mesh, I round off the lateral corners, but I keep the medial corners uh, at, right ang at right angles, squared off as they come. I roll it up halfway and place a vicral suture just to hold it in a roll. Here I'm actually tunneling uh, a grasper and port uh, pre-peritoneal. Uh, I've decided to place a 15 French drain. So that's going to be entirely pre-peritoneal, passing it into the groin. Because I don't want uh, a seroma forming, particularly in this guy who's had gram-negative septicemia. At this stage, we knew he had a gram-negative bacillus in his blood, came back as E. coli. But I wanted to make sure there was going to be no seroma in the groin. And that interlocking down lets me pass the drain through. So this is the ProGrip mesh. It's half rolled up at this stage. This makes it a little bit more manageable. Got to get the lower edge tucked in to the pocket. There's the retropubic placement. That's the vicral stitch I'm just removing now, which enables me to unravel the upper half that's rolled up. And just peeling back a little bit of that peritoneum at the top. That is, um, and you can see the rounded off edges, but otherwise that is uh, the full 16 times 14 centimeter ProGrip mesh. And I like that you don't have to tack it. sitting quite nicely. There was a large sack as you saw so I've placed an endo loop. I thought later on I could have probably inverted it and then done the herniotomy but thought of that afterwards. So here's the herniotomy. I'll take the sack out later and then Closing. I'm closing from medial to lateral here just because the medial tissues are of better quality so I can draw them laterally as I close. And because I didn't like the lumpy herniotomy tissue sitting there, I decided to invert that with another V-lock absorbable stitch. So again, I'll, I'll skip forward in a sec, but you'll, you'll see the point. That it's just inverted makes it look neater. So if you pull the threads through well, then you don't really see much exposed barbs at all. Now to the gallbladder. So we've moved to head up position. I'm in the French position, so I'm standing between the legs. And uh, that's a nasty, nasty gallbladder. It's amazing how rapidly they progress. Patient had been symptomatic for just over 24 hours now. 
This is the morning after his presentation to the emergency department. His CRP was starting to skyrocket. Very deep gallbladder neck. And you can see the gangrene in that wall. So my registrar suggested I add the live acrotractor. The medial part of the diaphragm was really quite irregular, as was the liver, but there was a flat bit laterally. You do need flat surfaces for it to attain a seal. So here's where you turn the suction on and turn the CO2 off, desufflate, allow the suction to work, and then let the CO2 back in. And that's just going to give me a little bit of extra lift on that liver and allow me to use that sucker and I'll throw in a Raytec gauze as well here to push down because this chap's got a fair amount of fat and bulging duodenum and a very deep gallbladder. So I was able to use the sucker to push downward while the Livac was holding the, the liver up and just giving me a combined extra bit of exposure. Handy to have that Ligashaw Maryland again. Alternating between pushing the fat down and sucking up fluid. And we can see a cystic artery coming onto view here. Now here I ran out of CO2 in the tank, so the nurses ran off and gave me a new tank of CO2. We've been using a lot of smoke evacuation and suction. And back to that neck of gallbladder, which is really quite buried in there. So hemolock clips. I decided to score open the serosal attachments along the margin of the gallbladder medially, just to create a bit more space so that neck can open up because it really seemed rather folded back on itself and contracted in. can see why I wanted to do the clean operation first, followed by this one. So here I'm chipping my, my way down. Um, you can see the stones there in the neck of the gallbladder. And using a bit of suction dissection. Livax holding the liver up, giving me some freedom with the sucker, teasing out the neck of the gallbladder. Everything's stuck. Be suspicious of everything until you've got clear anatomy. So Maryland forceps are nice to tease out tissues. It's just a few vessels and areola tissue. Unfortunately, I uh, Rupted the wall with the Babcock grasper, but Sucker managed to clean that up pretty quickly. And the anatomy is now looking a lot clearer.
easing out a lot of tissues. So by this stage, we've been going for about three and a half hours, including the hernias on both sides. We didn't have any duct dilation on the ultrasound or CT. And the cystic duct was relatively fine. I decided at this point that I would just have a look at the cystic duct. We weren't ideally set up for a cholangiogram with the operating table set up for hernia and cholecystectomy. But I just made a little incision into the cystic duct and milked it a bit and didn't seem to be anything coming up so Decided not to do a cholangiogram on this 87 year old septicemic patient. Turns out he did just fine. So now it's just a matter of getting the gallbladder off the liver. So I guess uh, options could have been to not attend the left inguinal hernia. I think that would have been a mistake uh, or to do an open repair, but I feel that the larger mesh that I could use with um, a preperitoneal approach would reduce the risk of a second recurrence. You can see that peritoneum looks like a petri dish. So it's time to remove the gallbladder and the levac retractor. So clamp the suction hose and uh, break the seal. And put the gallbladder into an endo catch bag. Nurse wanted me to take the gauze out separately, so here we go. So the Livac and the gallbladder are removed through the Hasson port. The Raytec gauze goes out and of course that little peritoneal sac at the start is now removed as well. So that's essentially the surgery done. Now you can see the liver has fallen down. That hickey is very, very superficial. In animal studies that's like a millimeter if that. I routinely irrigate with dilute ropivacaine. This patient had no opioid analgesia and uh, no complications after surgery. Thank you.